Determining which rental comps to use when valuing multifamily real estate is pretty important. Some of that process can be made easy by online website memberships like CoStar. Some of it is a gut feeling and some of it is just knowing the market. In this video, I'm gonna go over how I decide to choose rental comps when valuing multifamily real estate. Stick around. Let's go. As a multifamily broker, particularly when I'm marketing value add multifamily deals, I'm looking for rental comps that look and smell as close to the subject property as possible so that I can sell the idea that rents could go to a certain level when a unit is renovated. There's an art form to it. Investors aren't stupid. You're not gonna be able to sell the idea of a 2019 build with three stories with all the amenities as a comparable for rents on another deal that's 16 units and no amenities built in 1978. Now, while I'm going to use CoStar in this video as the main frame I use to eliminate and get down to the right rental comps, it doesn't matter which membership-based data program or website that you use, what I want you to pay attention to is the methodology on how I narrow down and get to the right rental comps. I want you to get a feel for how and what I'm thinking as I narrow down the comps. And of course, keep in mind, this is how I do things and there are many methods on finding the right rental comps. The most important thing is using realistic rental comps that your subject property could actually achieve when renovated properly. Don't ever fall for trying to find rental comps that meet the rent you want to get to in order to be able to force your pro forma to say something it never will just so you can buy the deal. Don't let FOMO take you down. Okay, here's the homepage of CoStar. We're going to type in the subject property that we're going to work on today, which is Mill Hopper Pines Apartments. The first thing you want to do is get a really good feel for the actual asset. I look at all the pictures to see how many stories it is, what it looks like on the outside, the landscaping, the amenities. Get a good idea of the feel and the classification on it. I'll check out demographics. I'll look at the rents that are already in place, the size of these units. The fact that it's all one bedrooms, when it was built, and while the fact that this one is leased to seniors, it could certainly be converted to a market rate asset, which is the highest and best use. Furthermore, I want to check out the website of the actual asset to see what it looks like and that confirms some of the rents found on CoStar. We can see it has a laundry room, which means it probably doesn't have laundry hookups inside the units. It's also got a swimming pool, nice landscaping, and if you know Gainesville, this is a phenomenal A location. Here we can confirm the same square footage that's on CoStar as well as the rents, what they're charging for application fees, and getting an idea of the interiors, which look like they're a little bit older with ceramic tiles, older appliances, countertops, and cabinetry. Going back to CoStar, we can see that it's 767 square feet, $700 a month. What I do like about CoStar is they own Apartments.com. Apartments.com is probably the number one rental website used overall by apartment owners. CoStar is good at some things and not so good at other things. The rental part of CoStar is actually really good because of their ownership of Apartments.com. Now we're gonna start our rental comp process. Let's go back to the homepage. We're gonna click on Properties, Multifamily. Now when you come into CoStar, mine is already set up so that it just pulls up the Gainesville market because that's where I'm based. But you would want to come in here and type in the market that you're after. So they're gonna grab all counties. Now, Millhopper is a 78 unit community. I probably wanna look at anything from 40 units up. And as you can tell, each time I narrow down, the number of properties will go down. As for unit mix, obviously we want one bedrooms included. And the style, since it's single story, we're just gonna go with garden and low rise. Here we can further filter down. For this particular asset, I believe you can get at least $900 a month on the one bedrooms. So if I believe you could achieve at least 900 on a renovated unit, that's the kind of comps I want to look for in the data set. Next, we look at market segment. We want to exclude all of the corporate units, military, senior, and vacation. For the rental type, we want to have just market rate assets. We want to choose all of the existing inventory only. 
Because this asset was built in the 1970s, we probably wanna keep the minimum open and have something that's no newer than 2005. And that's about all the other fields we wanna check off. Now you'll notice there are a whole bunch of other fields asking for information that I could have plugged in. But we don't wanna narrow this down too much. I just wanna get the basics in place so that now I can start diving into the map and hand choosing which ones I want. Okay, now we're gonna hit done and it'll list all of the assets that remain, which is about 55 properties. We obviously don't want 55 rental comps, so now we're gonna narrow down into the map. Our subject property is located right about here, which is an awesome location in Gainesville. Now this is where your knowledge of the market comes into play. I know that if someone would live here, they're probably not going to consider living east of 13th Street, so I could simply here move the map over and eliminate all of those units. It's also unlikely there'll be anyone living south of Archer Road. Now keep in mind all of these that we have in our list are having one bedrooms that rent for at least $900 a month that are built earlier than 2005. Next, we need to dive into each property by clicking on them and getting to know them through pictures, floor plans, amenities, and such. Since I know my market so well, most of these I don't even have to click on. I can just come in and eliminate or check mark the ones I want. For instance, I know Gator View is gonna be too far east so I can eliminate. I know Evergreen is too good of a product to be compared. The same goes for the Paddock Club and Legacy at Fort Clark are really high class assets. So what you're trying to do right now is just remove the ones that are obviously not matches at all and then we can go back and dive deeper into the ones that are left. So after that exercise, I have about 16 comps left. Then I like to start clicking on each one of them individually a little bit further to start looking at pictures, what kind of other floor plans they have, ages, amenities. For purposes of this video, we'll just keep the 16 in there for now, and then I like to export all of these into an Excel spreadsheet. Within CoStar, you can create various columns that you want to export in your Excel spreadsheet. I've already created one that is for one bedrooms when I'm doing these kinds of studies. That's the kind of information that will come out to Excel. Now we have the complex names, addresses, units, how many one bedrooms there are, what the rents are, the square footage of each, and the year built. I like to further add a dollar a square foot, and then I'll take the average and the median. Okay, so what I've done here is just cleaned up the columns and made them a little bit shorter and easier to read. I've added another column called rank, and this is where I rank each of the comps by how best they match the subject. The best matches are a one, a medium match is a two, and the one that least matches is a three. And then I've sorted each of these assets by the rank. So now I start analyzing a little bit further. I see that the three best matches are averaging about $1.85 a square foot, but the average size unit is a good 200 square feet less than the subject. Naturally, when the square footages are lower, the rents are gonna be higher per square foot, so our rents are probably gonna be a little bit less per square foot than such a small unit. So for now, let's put the $1.85 a square foot for those top three best comps. Then for all the medium matches, we're taking a look at the rent per square foot for all of the twos and we're at about $1.57 a square foot. Each of those comps are about 100 square feet less than the subject property. So let's put $1.57 a square foot here. And then the last three matches are the least closest to the subject property and are averaging about $1.30 a square foot. But we probably have enough comps up here to not really have any more focus on these bottom three. Now remember this, this is important. Tenants don't think in terms of dollar per square foot. They just think of the rent number, the $1,000 a month or the $900 a month. So when I'm looking at assets, I try to pay attention to what are the averages of the actual rent amounts coming in at? And can we be a little bit below that, but deliver a better renovated product? That way you're not stretching your pro forma for the max, max, max rent amount. You're beating the competition with a better quality product. So when you look at our rent comps, you've got roughly 966 a month for much smaller units. And on the two matches, we're at 1,050 with a range of about 1,000 to $1,100 a month on average. 
So as I'm looking at this, I know I can be better than this average because it's going to be obvious to the tenant that 270 square feet more is gonna be a big deal. But I don't wanna blow these rents out of the water, which is about 1,000 to $1,100 a month. I think the sweet spot in this example is about $9.75 a month. That would be well under a good part of the competition and you're delivering a fantastic renovated project. When doing your pro formas, I would run ranges of different types of results. What would happen if you only got $9.25? What happens if you got up to $1,150 like some of the higher rent comps? Regardless, we've got a hell of a rental growth on this particular asset. Now remember, the best thing you could ever do is to tour each of these rental comps against the property that you're looking at buying. The exercise we went through just now is prior to submitting your offer because usually you're not gonna have time to tour 12 or 13 different rent comps. You could see websites like CoStar make the narrowing down part pretty easy, but there's a lot of gut feel in choosing the right assets after that. And the only way to kill it is to know every one of your markets like I do in this video where I can just look at an asset and tell you whether or not it matches, what corridor it's on and whether that, that would even be considered by a tenant. I know, I know, it's a lot of work and it's gonna require you visiting these markets and touring the assets and touring the corridors extensively in order to have that kind of encyclopedic knowledge so that you can dominate. I didn't write a book called Multifamily Investors Who Do Kind of Good. I hope this video brought you value, and if it did, give me a like down below, and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of each video each week. See you on the next one.